Question two. We'll speed this up. Um, I want to stop feeling, not feel more. How do I stop feeling? Uh, well, a lot of you have brought this up of saying like, I am in a state of consistent, or what feels like on the verge of a consistent emotional breakdown. I feel like if I don't pull out of it, I'm not able, I'm not gonna be able to function as a parent, as a, as a spouse, as a friend. And that can be very real, is that I'm up here saying, let's unpack, let's, let's take a look at the things that you're not feeling. Let's take a look at the things that you're suppressing. Let's, let's even ask really hard questions about your history, your timeline, traumas that you've experienced, stuff that's going on that is affecting you. And you're out there being like, I am looking at that stuff every day. I would love to be able to figure out how to not have this emotional, be feel like I'm on this verge of an emotional breakdown. And I, and I just want you to know that you are seen and you are heard. You don't want to live like this forever. And so while EHS is about paying, emotionally healthy spirituality is about paying attention to why we do what we do. It's about to attuning to our emotion or our lack of emotion. It's about allowing God to meet us at the source of those emotions, to unblock the flow of them. You may not have that problem this morning. You may be the opposite. Too aware of emotions, too aware of the hurts of your past, too aware of whatever it might be, and you don't wanna live like this forever. But numbing isn't a safe or healthy option. So when we sense big emotions or we feel, and big emotions make us feel out of control, Depression is often the result. And I'm not just talking about cl clinical depression. I'm saying when I feel, this is me speaking, when I feel large, out of control emotions, my response is to depress them, to figure out a way to control them, to numb them, to manage them, and to depress them. And that is where I can fall into that place of not having, of, of being numb to my emotions or to parts of my emotional journey and my emotional life. And that's not where I want any of us to be. It's not where I want to be and it's not where I want any of us to be. So while when we feel big emotions that are out of control, I think that this is such a simple tool, but I want to give it to you guys. The feeling wheel is a rad tool that if you guys will look it up, it basically is, it has our basic emotions and it has layers in a circle and out from that is your basic emotions, more of them, and then more of them. And what it is, is it's helping us define and be able to articulate what we're feeling. Now, articulating what we're feeling is not the solution. It's not like the end goal, but it is so valuable when we're starting to feel out of control around our emotions. What do you feel? I don't know what I feel. To be able to say, I feel blank then you've begun to see and have a sense of healthy control rather than just trying to control emotions through numbing. And you can ask the question, where are you coming from? Okay? So while I cannot encourage you to stop feeling, I will encourage you also, beyond the feeling wheel, wheel tool, I will encourage you to have a safe place with people who you can let it out. You can let it flow. Create a place in your physical life and your spiritual world to grieve, to agonize, to vent, and visit it as often as is needed. But learn, I don't even wanna say learn to leave it there because I think that's a, that can be a misconception. But having a place where I can go, whether that's a person or that's a, a part of my prayer journey where I'm alone, or if it's a community of people who I know and trust and I can go to them and I don't have to put on any performance, I don't have to pretend or anything, and I can just let it out. I, in a sense, I'm leaving it there. I don't mean leave it there like, oh, all better. I mean, I am allowing this 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 the scripture for us to bear one another's burden, to be fruitful in my life where I can share my burden with other people. And in so doing, I'm taking some of it off of my heart and some of it off of my shoulders. And now I have a ability to go, okay, I now life feels more manageable because I have safe people and places to let some of this out while I'm in the process. Does that make sense? Okay, so also I would encourage you as you're working through the physical responses to it, a counselor, a therapist is, is so vital to your journey of letting some of this out. If you're dealing with huge, with large traumas or wounds or pains or out of control emotions, having somebody that you trust to lay it out to, awesome. 
having somebody that has the professional and, under, and wisdom to be able to hear you and then help you and give you tools, also awesome. So I would add that as a tool is to speak to a counselor or a therapist and make that a regular part of your life. One of the reasons that people are so hurt, have been so hurt by church in the past is that we want to try to be everything to everybody. We're like, oh yeah, come and talk to me and then we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll do that. That's, that's not healthy. I don't have the ability, the understanding, or the expertise to be able to help everybody, or maybe that many people at all. But there are people out there that do, and so for us, reaching out to those people is extremely important. Um, also, here's, here, remember this. Our stuff isn't going anywhere. You will often hear us say the phrase, you are not in a race, and your mess does not disqualify you. You may see a closet full of stuff but that doesn't mean that you have to pull it all out at the same time, strew it about your house, spread it around, and live in it. Inviting Jesus into that place is to trust him to open up the hidden places, the closets full of junk, to open those up and to take out the things that we're ready to deal with and that he's, he wants us to deal with in that place. So just because you know that there are closets and spaces full of stuff to deal with doesn't mean that you have to rip it all out and make a huge mess of your life in the midst of it. So being okay, knowing I have a lot of things that I'm dealing with right now, that's, that's true. Number one, that's true. Number two, you're not in a race. You don't have to pull it all out and deal with it by next week. Take a deep breath. Release that pressure. He knows where you are. He's not going anywhere. You're, you're walking through hard things. Me walking through hard things does not disqualify us. And so we can allow the timing and the presence of the Spirit of God to lead us in and through the things in the timing that he has for us to go through this stuff. I would say this, we say this a lot of times to couples that come and meet with us and they're like, my marriage is so hard. And we're like, well, tell me why your marriage is so difficult. And it's like, because we're just constantly working and we're working and we're working. We go to this class and then we come home and we practice this communication tool that we've been given. And then in the morning we, we get up and we read our word together and we share it and we journal together and we talk about all the reasons why we're, we're having a hard time with one another. And then we're, but we're working on our marriage and then we're reading this book together and we're doing this thing. And, and I may be exaggerating, but it feels like that. And I'm like, like, whoa, wow, if you are constantly working on your marriage, you are not enjoying your marriage, and you have turned your marriage into a job or a project to fix, rather than what it is meant to be is a deep well of joy. And so what we teach people is this, in your marriage, you take a step with your right foot, and this would be, hey, we've got hard things that we have to face. You're gonna work on those things. But your left foot is gonna be, but you know what? We're gonna go out on a date and we're gonna go dancing and we're gonna enjoy one another. And we're gonna have some fun. And in the midst of that, we're gonna keep working on some hard things that are gonna come up every once in a while. And then we're gonna take a day trip to the coast with a picnic and we're gonna have a blast together and we're gonna enjoy it. And then we're gonna keep working on some of our communication stuff that needs to be fixed. And we're gonna make sure that we're having intimacy in our marriage and that it's beautiful and wonderful. And in this, you're moving forward as opposed to work, 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 work. <laughs> work, right? How, how, does that look fun? Hey, let's sign me up for that. No. And so I think this is so true of our seasons when we're going through hard things and you might be in a season where you are really going through it. And God wants to meet you in your process, but he also wants to meet you with his compassion. He wants to meet you with his joy. He wants to meet you with his love. He wants you to get to experience and take from the fruit of his presence and his life that he has for you so that you are working on hard things, but you're also enjoying his presence and you're working on hard things, but you're pulling from the life that he has for you. And in so doing, you are not just spinning in circles on that thing as opposed to moving on a walk with Jesus.